Hi, my name is Roger. And I'm Mayra. Welcome to Aaron Travels. So this is our video of the year. I am very excited because in this video we're going to answer one of the questions that we've been asked a lot lately. It is, how do we manage to travel long term or full time? And also, what is our number one advice for someone who's thinking about traveling long term? Not only will we share our answers, but we also invited a few friends that are traveling long term around the world. They're going to be sharing a little bit about their story, um, how they manage to travel full, full time, and also a few tips that might be helpful for your travels. Okay, so now we're going to tell you our travel story. So we lived in San Diego, California. We both had full time jobs and we actually enjoy our lives there. However, other dreams were being born. Roger wanted to experience a minimalist life and I wanted to see the world. So that's how, when we converted our first van. So, so far we uh, have traveled seven months in the United States and Mexico. We went to Puerto Rico for 15 days and right now we just completed seven months in Southeast Asia. By the way, if anybody's interested in knowing how much we spend on our travels, let us know in a comment below so that way we can make another video. Okay, so to answer the question how we managed to travel for so long, we're going to break it down into three easy steps. Uh, the main first one is since we both had full-time jobs, we were able to completely minimize our our uh, expenses and we were able to save for that whole year. We also sold everything we had. And, uh, and the second step is while we're traveling, we try to save as much as possible. We try to budget our money really well. So for example, when we are in other countries, we try to eat what, where the locals eat and avoid the tourist restaurants. And in Puerto Rico, we use couch surfing and just things like that to stretch our money. So to not depend only on our savings, we uh, after the seven months, we also decided to sell our van. We purchased a new van, converted it, sold that one as well. We did some part-time work uh, through temp agencies in Florida. And we also get a little bit of money through affiliate marketing as well. Okay, so what is our number one advice for someone who's thinking about traveling full-time? What's your advice? Okay, so my advice would be to try to make travel your priority. For example, my priority uh, at a time was surfing, and I would like to buy surfboards. They sometimes cost $300, so in, and now instead of buying that $300 surfboard, I'll look for, let's say, a Mexico, uh, Mexico surf trip that the ticket will cost about $300. So just making travel your priority. Uh, you know, if it's purses you like buying, um, you know, put that money into traveling so you can do it more often. And my number one advice um, is to really learn how to become a saver. If you're not one, you can become one. I did, so you can do it too. And also, um, this is a life-changing decision, so do a lot of research, ask a lot of questions to travelers like ourselves. But one thing I do want to let you know is that traveling long-term, it sometimes it's not really about the money, but it's, it's about the time. Like, the prioritizing time to travel. Okay, anyways, enough about us. Let's get to our first guest. Uh, they are called Jumping Places. They are long-term travelers, also fellow YouTubers. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, my name is Chris. And my name is Carol. And we have a travel channel on YouTube and also an account on Instagram called Jumping Places. So we're gonna be answering three questions about traveling full-time. So the first question is about our history of traveling. I'm I'm from Brazil and he is from England and we met in Brazil because he was living in Brazil so uh, we used to work together and then our company kind of transferred us to Houston and we were living in Houston for some time in the US and when we were there we started to think about this traveling full-time and we, we saved money for this. But now we've been traveling for five months we started in Southeast Asia and now we are in Europe. Um, we don't have a, like a, a plan, like a, a real plan of what we're gonna be doing the next months, but we have like an idea of where we're going. And yeah, that's it, I think, that's yeah. our history. And the plan is that we're gonna be traveling for two years. And question number two is gonna be, how have we managed to be able to travel full time? So like Carol said, when we were in Houston, we uh, kind of planned it. We had been looking online to see um, yeah, other people that have done it. 
we kind of got an idea since we wanted to travel for two years we tried to see how much it would cost more or less and then from there on we pretty much just started to to save up and we were saving for like probably around two years for this and we also had a bit of savings before so that's how we managed to do it and right now obviously I get a bit of money from YouTube doesn't pay for all my expenses at the moment probably like a quarter or a third of our travel expenses per month but that is also helping so at the moment that is how we're able to travel and like I said we also have Instagram so we have some opportunities with some other companies stuff like that and yeah all that helps out but that's how we're able to manage at the moment and the third and final question is what would be our advice like number one advice for someone that wants to travel full-time so to me it would be more like um, try and do like a realistic evaluation of your current situation probably I mean more like financially because uh, obviously not everyone can save up money to just travel freely for one or two years so if you're someone that can't really save up that much money I would um, like look online there's loads of people that pretty much travel full-time with barely any money they just saved up a bit for like the flight and then they might do things like uh, volunteer work or they might uh, work in another country for a couple of months and then travel a couple of months and then keep going back and forward or there's other people like us that will just save up for ages so that then then they can travel for a while without yeah having to think that much about finances so like I said it would just be to really evaluate your um, situation and then just search online because there'll be plenty of people that are doing this full time that are in the situation you're, you're pretty much in right now you have anything else no i guess you just need to be careful and kind of plan not plan like what you're gonna be doing or where you're going but uh your options like if you need if you need to work you need to know where you can work and i guess there are a lot of opportunities you can be a teacher or you can work on a bar you just need to to kind of know what you you can do if you need money you know so i guess yeah that's it hmm? yeah so yeah that's all all from us so hopefully this video is helpful and see you later see ya <laughs> okay so to tag along with what chris and carol mentioned some of these platforms are world packers and work away so in these platforms you exchange work for food and accommodations and we actually met some travelers doing it while we were traveling if you would rather work for cash instead of volunteering uh, you can apply for holiday visas um, this, these visas allow you to work uh, full-time around the world we're gonna leave uh, all these links on the description below so as far as teaching English online um, we met a guy from the United States in Bali and he was teaching on VIPKid.com, so if somebody's interested, go ahead and check out the website. Okay, so now let's hear it from Vanish Adventures. Uh, they are van lifers. We actually met them their first week of travels down in San Diego, and then we reunited with them um, probably like six months, months six months, I don't know, five months later in New Orleans. Uh, let's get into it. All right, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm Naomi. I'm Julian. And we live in this van. Live in this van for a little over a year now. Our Instagram is Vanished Adventures, vanished.adventures if you're trying to find us. Uh, um, so yeah, I think people want to hear a little bit about our story. Um, I don't know, Naomi, you want to answer this one? Basically, um, we both graduated college. I was a year after him, and we did the apartment life. We both had full-time jobs, and it just wasn't cutting it for us. So we started discussing alternatives, like things that would be fun and maybe more fulfilling, and finally landed on the van life. And it was about a year plus later that we bought the van, and then a year later we finished converting it, and we finally hit the road. Yeah, and people want to know how we manage to travel full-time. Um, to be completely honest, we don't travel full-time. Like, we are not traveling right now. We are living with my parents, and we have been for the last couple of months. I got surgery, uh, so obviously we couldn't be on the road for that. But usually what we do is we would stop in cities along the way and sort of have a home base. We'd still live in the van, but we would just sort of 
network and stay in one area and make some money. Um, so that's what we would normally do to travel full time. And we've been sort of trying to figure out ways to make more money uh, on the road. But as of now, I was delivering for Amazon um, using this van, which is pretty awesome. And Naomi was working at a candy factory in, uh, in New Orleans. In, it's not French Quarter. <laughs> in New Orleans. And she was selling pralines. So I think you found that work through Craigslist. Yeah. Yeah. Just so we like checking up your local spots. We went into town and then we just went to a cafe and both got on our computers and figured out what would work for us. And I landed on delivering. Well, I would drop her off at work and then she would. <laughs> You know, it was like a nine to five, nine, yeah. nine to six for her. And then during that time, I would go out and deliver as many packages as I could for Amazon, which is kind of cool. I, I would tell people I work from home because technically that was correct. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then third, people want to know what would be um, what would be our number one advice for people looking to travel in the van. What do you think? Is it to travel in the van? Yeah. People want to know. Someone to travel full time. I mean, there's a couple of, there's so many pieces of advice. One piece of advice Julian always tells people is just buy the van, commit to it, just like go for it and then figure out the rest because that was like our hardest jump. Uh, one of my suggestions is if you're converting your own van, um, I've written about this before, is like have a couple things that you won't compromise on and then build your van around that plan. Otherwise, like when you're building, there are lots of like, if we did this or if we did that but like for example for Julia and I like we wouldn't compromise on the height we wanted a full-size bed and I wouldn't compromise on the toilet so basically around those three things we built the van my advice for just traveling in general is um, for us has been plan as least as possible just like hit the road and see what happens I'd say like our craziest funnest most memorable experiences have been made just like from things we didn't plan and didn't plan on doing. And actually like at this point, when we have plans, it's like more stressful for us than if we don't have plans. So like try to be as flexible as you possibly can. But it totally depends on your personality type. That's just what worked for us. Yeah. Just to add to that real quick, I would say that um, just go with the flow sometimes you know, you have something in mind of what, where you want to be, when, and how you want to do it. And then another thing presents itself and you're sort of presented with this opportunity to, to change course. And more often than not, I think changing course pays off. So with that in mind, just be open-minded and sort of look for these new channels and pathways that you can take um, on your adventure and that you'll find yourself in these sort of unreal situations where you're like, how did we get here yeah, with these amazing people? How did we meet these people on the road? We're in this amazing site that we wouldn't have found if it weren't for these people that we met, you know, yeah. things like that. So there's all these little avenues and um, ways to sort of make your adventure sort of flow in a way that is very important, at least when we're traveling. We try to just maintain sort of this free flowing spirit. And I think that's really important. So yeah, so I hope that helps. Yeah, good luck on your journey. Good luck on your journey. Whatever it may be, not even van life, just like whatever adventure you're like heading out on. Van life, boat life, scooter life, whatever yeah, you want to do. whatever you're feeling. <laughs> Again, step one is always buying it. Once yeah. you have it, there's really no turning back. So, yeah. you know, if you're on the fence, definitely go out there and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of this can be Googled or Instagrammed or... You'll learn we, all the way. We were amateurs and we figured it out, like total amateurs, so yeah. Cool. And again, um, our Instagram handle is vanished.adventures. Yeah. Um, if you want to find us, feel free to hit us up and sort of just ask us questions or let us know, um, you know, if you're going to be in the same area, we'd love to meet up. So yeah. Yeah, totally. All right. See ya. Later. Real quick, you guys, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps the video out a lot. It helps other people see it as well. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. So there's various ways to find employment while you're on the road across country. Uh, of course, there's the, like Julian Naomi said, there's the ads on Craigslist uh, for gigs. There's also things like uh, the TaskRabbit app. Uh, what we used was the temp agency called Ronstad. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, so that, that agency, they, um, 
they put you to work right away, sometimes even the same day. They have uh, offices all around the United States and also about 39 in, uh, in 39 other countries. So that's a, that's a good choice. Uh, since some of our friends are in different parts of the world, they're going to be speaking Spanish. So uh, just make sure you turn on your closed captioning down there uh, in case you get lost. Okay, so now let's get to the next guest, Chini and Rodrigo from Amando America. Uh, they're also traveling in the van throughout South America. Let's go. Hola, ¿cómo están? Somos Chini y Rodrigo, creadores del blog e Instagram de viajes Amando América. En este momento nos encontramos viajando en nuestra combi, la cual nosotros acondicionamos para poder viajar. Bueno, les cuento que hace seis meses que estamos viajando, recorrimos Argentina, llegando al punto más al sur, que es Ushuaia. Después eh, empezamos a subir rumbo norte, recorrimos toda la ruta 40, que es una ruta mítica de Argentina. Partes de Chile, Bolivia, Perú y actualmente nos encontramos en Ecuador, en la parte de la Amazonía. Les cuento que nos pueden encontrar en las redes sociales. Tenemos un Instagram donde subimos fotos y vamos compartiendo el viaje en tiempo real mediante las historias. Amando América también en Instagram. Tenemos un canal de YouTube que es nuevito, tiene poquitos videos, pero también ahí nos pueden encontrar. Y tenemos un blog donde vamos contando nuestras experiencias, información, eh, un poco de info útil, guías de los lugares donde vamos conociendo, visitando y es amandoamerica.com. Así que bueno, esperamos verlos por ahí. Bueno, como muchos nos preguntaron cómo hacemos para viajar a tiempo completo, queríamos contarle un poco cómo hicimos nosotros. Eh, la idea fue, mientras armábamos la combi, eh, trabajamos mucho, ahorramos mucho, Muchísimo. todo lo que podíamos, sí. eh, para generar un ahorro y poder salir y para tener para algunos arreglos o cosas que necesitemos adicionales. Gastos que puedan surgir durante el día. Claro. Igual la idea no es eh, gastarnos esos ahorros, claro. así que buscamos formas de ir generando ingresos mediante el viaje. Una de las cosas que hacemos es vender artesanías. Tenemos llaveritos que hacemos nosotros, eh, también imanes y estas chapitas también las hacemos nosotros y las vendemos en el viaje. Lindas. Bueno, eso nos permite generar también algún ahorro. Eh, estamos con la idea de hacer algunas postales, ya que nos ha pasado que nos preguntan si tenemos postales para vender. Así que bueno, queremos hacer postales. Eh, también trabajamos mucho con fotografía y edición de video. Y eh, bueno, trabajamos en general con, con restaurantes, eh, con hoteles, con marcas, eh, con agencias de viaje eh, mediante intercambio. O sea, nosotros hacemos fotos y videos y ellos a cambio nos pueden dar alguna excursión o comida o alojamiento en el hotel y bueno y eso si bien no nos genera dinero nos permite ahorrar mucho dinero claro. entonces también es una especie de, de trabajo y eh, otra cosa que hacemos nosotros bailamos eh, folclore que es una danza típica argentina tenemos nuestros trajecitos acá en la combi y a veces cuando bueno se da el momento y el lugar eh, bailamos y pasamos la gorra así que bueno esas son más o menos la, la forma en que nosotros solventamos claro. eh, nuestra forma de vida que por ahora es vivir de viaje Bueno, nuestro principal consejo para la gente que quiere viajar a tiempo completo es básicamente que se anime, porque no se va a arrepentir. Sí, eh, no solo que quiera cambiar su vida a una forma de vida nómada de viajar a tiempo completo, sino hay que se anime a, a cumplir cualquier sueño que quiera, porque bueno, para eso estamos en realidad. Así que bueno, anímense, viajen además, viajar, eh, bueno, te abre un montón la cabeza, nos ha pasado a sí. nosotros. Eh, te permite conocer un montón de gente, de culturas, eh, de comidas y, y vivir un montón de experiencias nuevas que, que estando en la casa no, bueno, se no, no se podría, no sucederían. Así que bueno, anímense a viajar, no se van a arrepentir. ¿sí? Aunque sea, no tiempo completo, pero igual anímense a viajar cerca de casa, lejos, de cualquier manera, viajen. En Just Like Chini y Rodrigo, we have met a lot of travelers that come up with creative ideas to fund their travels, like making hand, handmade jewelry playing instruments, doing the fire dance, and honestly, all of this counts to fun your travels, so take note. 
and also uh, the, the, depending on where you're traveling in the world you can also save on accommodations by taking care of somebody's home uh, these are through apps like uh, uh, like uh, trusted house sitters uh, nomador or house carers we also invited another friend Jorge from Viajera Mente he is a neuroscience expert and an avid traveler, and he's gonna tell us why traveling is so addicting. Let's hear it. Estoy acá en Varanasi, en India, eh, y la pregunta es, ¿por qué viajarnos es una adicción? Y la verdad es porque te despierta diferentes eh, funciones en tu cerebro que tienen que ver con un circuito de búsqueda y recompensa. El prepararte a la aventura, el estar ansioso, despierta que tu segregación de dopamina sea mayor. Y eso hace que finalmente tú quieras eh, volver a viajar y volver a viajar una otra vez. Sin embargo, para esto siempre se necesita una predisposición para que tú finalmente puedas eh, hacerlo y, y, y aceptar este, este proceso, ¿no? Porque también te lo puedes pasar mal si tú no quieres. We also asked Jorge what really happens inside our brain while we travel and this is how he answered. Cuando viajas te sometes a una serie de estímulos que hacen que tu cerebro eh, tenga mayor eh, neuroplasticidad, más flexibilidad y entonces empiezas a cambiar físicamente desde dentro hacia afuera pero a través del estímulo que está desde afuera hacia adentro. Empiezas a ver por ejemplo esto, nuevas culturas, eh, nuevas tradiciones, nuevos rituales, nuevas sensaciones y tu cerebro internamente empieza a replantearse algunas cosas que ya daba por hechas. Por esa razón es tan impactante el tema de los viajes, por esa razón eh, finalmente uno empieza a transformarse y nunca vuelve el que se fue, por más que suene un cliché, cuando viajas nunca vuelve el que se fue, porque finalmente hay un proceso de cambio. Para que ese proceso de cambio sea positivo requiere sí una predisposición tuya, si tú estás negándote a la nueva realidad esto va a ser un costo energético mayor, tu cerebro eh, va a impedir un poco este trabajo de cambio y eh, vas a poder quizás incluso pasándotelo mal porque el cambio va a ocurrir de todas formas es un proceso de reconexión de esto que ya nosotros llamamos en neurociencia conectoma y este tipo de cosas son las que te impactan más fuertemente para generar este tipo de cambio so once again if you want to know how much we spend on our seven months traveling throughout the uh, United States and Mexico our two weeks in Puerto Rico or our seven months in Southeast Asia leave a comment below we hope you found this video helpful and you got new ideas for traveling long term. For us, it has been one of the best decisions that we have ever made. And go and see the world. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Bye.